what have we seen so far? We've seen that molecules, hydrocarbon molecules, are connected up mostly through carbon to carbon single bonds. These sigma bonds are hybrid orbital bonds, sp3 hybridized carbon atoms. And those single bonds, which are fairly um, regular in their shape, or tube-like, or regular, they allow, and at least in the theory, they allow for free rotation around those carbon to carbon bonds. So we might start to think that all possible orientations or conformations are possible. This is not true. Some conformations are better than others. It's just like a human being. You'll find the most comfortable, lowest energy state. Kind of leaning like that, pushing into the chair probably isn't very comfortable. So you'll adjust your position and find a more comfortable, less antagonistic, less strainful position to sit or lie down. The molecules are just the same. Now looking for that conformation, that shape and arrangement of the atoms and the bonds, which creates the least amount of antagonism, the least amount of strain. And we looked at a couple of different types of strain in the last chapter. So, we talked about when we were looking down a carbon to carbon bond, looking at this conformation we said was eclipsed, where the two sets of hybrid bonds on the two adjacent carbons were arranged in a line so that they were actually overlapping or, or eclipsing each other when we looked at that Newman projection. So it put bonding orbitals for the carbon to hydrogen bond in one atom, it put them really too close to the bonding orbitals on the carbon to hydrogen bond on that next carbon atom. The text would sometimes talk about bonding orbitals on one atom interacting with the anti-bonding orbital on the next atom to be completely um, straight from the definition. But we're talking about bonding orbitals. Those bonding orbitals have electrons, negatively charged electrons, negatively charged things that repel each other. So there's a comfort zone that when the molecules are eclipsed, and the CH to CH bonds are eclipsed in the light like that, it's too close to the comfort it causes torsional strain. Likewise, we also see torsional strain when there's a CH bond in one carbon atom, and its neighboring carbon has a carbon to carbon bond with a surrounding CH3 group. This is mostly torsional. And when it's two CH3 groups, which are aligned on top of each other through bonding orbitals on the adjacent carbons, We've got torsional strain, but there's also a very real sterical strain as well. Now, sterical strain was physically atoms trying to occupy the same space at the same time. So the nuclei with positively charged protons repelling each other, too close to the compound. And then related to that, even when the molecule is staggered at 60 degrees to alleviate that, these bulky CH3 groups, which are branching out like roots on an umbrella, they're still causing sterical strain because the atoms and the hydrogen attached are getting too close for comfort. And we saw that with the molecular models. You could easily make the, the little white beads actually bang into each other with a particular conformation. So even when staggered, we have a CH3 to CH3 interaction on those different carbons, which is too close for comfort. It's sometimes referred to as a gauche strain. So that's we were there last week. So, another idea which talks about strain in molecules is the bio theory about angle strain. And it's based on the idea for an sp3 hybridized carbon atom, a tetrahedral carbon, the most comfortable conformation, keeping those bonding electrons as far apart from each other as possible comfortable conformation is that tetrahedral shape with a bond angle of about 109.4 degrees each time. It keeps the bonds and the electrons in those bonds as far apart from each other as possible. So that gives us the maximum comfort zone. We via postulated that as we deviate from that 109.4 angle, so going down to 108 or down to 90, or even down to 60 with a triangular molecule, a cyclopropane derivative, 
as that angle decreases, it increasingly puts those bonding electrons closer to, together. Negatively charged pairs of electrons being squashed closer together around that carbon atom point. That's not good for the molecule when negatively charged electrons repel other negatively charged electrons. The biopost related to that increased deviation would cause an increased angle strain, as you described it. As that angle strain increases, he said that molecules would therefore be higher and higher in energy. To a fair degree, this has proved true. You see that these molecules, when they combust, and the energy is given off, it's a lot more energy than you'd normally expect for that chemical formula. So taking a simplified form of the equation for the combustion of a hydrocarbon, CH changing it's mainly making up the hydrocarbon molecule, and we can break down the energy given off to an average per CH2 unit in the molecule. So regardless of how big or small the molecule is, when we break it down by every CH2 unit, the amount of energy for that CH2 unit, we get a comparative amount of energy in the molecule. Different sizes of the molecules, uh, simple propane, the hexanes, and beyond. The total heat of combustion for these molecules certainly varies greatly. And when we take it down to per CH2 unit, it comes out to a pretty close and consistent amount of energy, around about that 658-659 kilojoules per mole. And when we look at molecules with strain, which are combusting, with our CH2 energy greater than this, is telling us about the pure strain per CH2 unit in the molecule. Let's look at some examples. Now, one thing to mention now is that before we look at these examples, biosphere on angle strain predicted that cyclopropane and cyclobutane would have strain energy. Biospheria on angle strain predicted that cyclopentane and cyclohexane would be flat and strain free molecules. So it fits with his general idea that for smaller size cycles, there should be smaller bond angles and greater strain. So he's saying that molecules with a free carbon ring and four carbon would have angle strain. 5 and 6 being close to that perfect 109.4 degrees angle, you predict that 5 carbon and 6 carbon rings would be straight free. Let's take a look and see if he was right. So what's the first problem we have? Surely is, if we're trying to make a cyclopropane ring with three carbons using those shorter stems for single bonds, we can't really get that third bond in without popping something on the other side of the molecule. <laughs> Doesn't work. So we're going to have to cheat slightly and use the longer stalks, which are normally used for uh, double bonds, just to get the molecule to fit together. The pieces of plastic don't feel comfortable being that tightly angled together. Just think how those electrons feel. Well, there certainly seems to be some merit to Bayer's angle strain theory. 
the best molecule you're going to be able to produce is using those longer stems. Now the other thing we see when we make this molecule up is that looking along any particular carbon to carbon bond, what's the position of a CH bonds on those adjacent high air carbons? And some are all set up. What kind of confirmations have we been looking at? Staggered and eclipsed. So what do we notice about those bonding electrons, the bonding electrons in the next carbon? Are you feeling shy today? They're eclipsed. The eclipse, yes, thank you. Ha! Ah, we know that's also a problem. Bonding electrons with the bonding orbitals or the antibonding orbitals in the next carbon are too close for comfort. This is causing torsional strain. So the calculated total strain for this molecule isn't all about angle strain. There is some torsional strain in here as well. But we can work out how much torsional strain there is. There's a pair of bonding orbitals there, and the energy for that strain was 11. CH to CH was the simplest kind of an eclipse. Yes, because it's just a carbon to hydrogen bond and the electrons in that bond eclipse behind another carbon to hydrogen bond. Four, four kilojoules per mole. So there's a four kilojoule per mole interaction there. There's another four there down below, which gives us eight. And from this carbon to this carbon, above and below, that's another eight. And then from here, here around the back there's another four kilojoules and another four kilojoules there as well. So that gives us 8, 16, 24 kilojoules which can be explained by torsional strain. But that doesn't explain all of the strain energy in the molecule. Torsional strain between bonding pairs of electrons is only explaining 24 kilojoules. And the total strain in this molecule, by comparing heats of combustion, is over 100, 115. So we can say that bias theory is the main source of strain in this molecule. The biggest slice of strain is angle strain. And torsional strain only explains a very small chunk, less than a quarter. Everybody see that? Too scared of killing in face, Jamie. He said screw chemistry more down. Then he said screw Dr. screw chemistry. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. So, a four carbon ring still has problems. And when we look at the heat of combustion, and the total energy divided down to just CH2 groups, the energy for the CH2 groups is still too much. And between the four carbons, it totals up to a strain energy of 110 kilojoules per mole. Still a very high figure. Now, if the carbons were in a perfect ring, okay, a flat ring, as we look at one pair of carbon to hydrogen bonds compared to the next. Looking down that bond in the Newman projection, it does look as if they eclipse once more. However, the molecule is capable of just contorting a little bit and it twists to a non-planar setup. The last carbon just trying to puck it and twist it of the ring. So it is trying to actively alleviate that strain. 
but it is restricted by the cycle of carbon. But it does pucker a little bit to try and get away from that eclipse confirmation. But they're still predominantly in an eclipse confirmation. There's only so much it can do to alleviate. So with each one of those eclipse confirmations from one stage gone to the next, four kilojoules above the wall, and another four to make 16, another four, and another four. In theory at least, it could give us a total of 32 kilojoules per mole of torsional strain. That's not quite true because it does try and twist out of that eclipse confirmation a little bit. And if we generalise, we can say that it's probably fairly close to that 32 kilojoules of strain. Probably slightly less, maybe about 30, 29 or something. But it's a good generalisation point to assume it's in a exactly eclipse confirmation in 32 kilojoules. So there is again some torsional strain connected to this molecule because it does put the bonding uh, orbitals pretty much in a eclipse confirmation from one set to the next. But still, most of the strain energy must be coming from Bayer's idea of angle strain rather than torsional strain. So Bayer wins this one as well.